What's up guys, Dollar Store Captain Price here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to get IW4X on PC. I wanted to make this tutorial for you guys to show you exactly how to get IW4X as quickly and easily as possible. The IW4X experience has been super fun. There's lots of really cool mods and maps and different things you can play, and obviously I want you guys to be able to experience that, so I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. So first things first, what exactly is IW4X? This is essentially a modded client for Modern Warfare 2. You're not exactly playing Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. In order to get all these really cool mods and custom maps and weapons and stuff, you have to play on a modded client, which is exactly what this is. Your stats are separate from actual Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, and you have a different server list than the actual game. But yeah, let me show you guys exactly how you get IW4X. The very first thing you need to do is go to the X Labs website. You can either just Google it, or I'll have a link in the description so you can easily find it. This is what their homepage currently looks like, and you need to go to the IW4X section. Go ahead and click IW4X Client Support, and you're basically greeted with this giant wall of text. And I know it could be a little bit confusing, which is why I'm going to break it down and make it even simpler. I think it's also worth mentioning that IW4X is a PC-only modded client. You can't find this on Xbox. You won't find it on PlayStation. I'm sure we all wish that IW4X could be accessed on console, but that's just not even a thing. Hopefully I'm not shattering anyone's expectations. I mean, I'm not the one that made the mod, but yes, it only exists on PC. But yeah, the first thing I would recommend doing is go on Steam and buy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I know some people don't want to pay full price for it. It's currently going for $19.99. If you want to, you can wait for the Steam Summer Sale or just for Call of Duty games in general to go on sale first. For this tutorial, I'm not going to recommend the torrenting method, and that's not even how I did it in the first place. I own the game on Steam, so that's what we're going to be doing. So that's my personal recommendation recommendation. Buy Modern Warfare 2 on Steam and then install the single player and the multiplayer. Once you've done that, go back to the X Labs website and download the X Labs launcher. For the Steam guide on getting IW4X, this is the fourth step, which is just downloading the launcher. I've got mine right here. I've got it pinned to the bottom and you'll see that it's actually a very straightforward launcher. They have a quick little home tab here and then they also have the launcher for S1X, which is for Advanced Warfare, IW6X, which is for Ghost, and then IW4X, which is what we're looking at right now, Modern Warfare 2. From here, all you have to do is click the settings icon and then you're going to browse for your Modern Warfare 2 installation. To put it as simply as possible, you're just looking for your Modern Warfare 2 Steam folder. If you're having trouble finding it, just go back to Steam and then on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, just right click, go to properties, and then click local files, and then click browse. This right here is your Modern Warfare 2 folder, and this is where you're going to be installing IW4X. Once you have a good idea of where your Modern Warfare 2 folder is, go back to the X Labs launcher, and then go back to Modern Warfare 2 installation and click browse. We'll start on this PC, and I've got my Steam stuff installed on my D drive. Click there, and then we go down to Steam, go to Steam Apps, then go to Common. And then we can see that we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 right here. Right now, the X Labs launcher is only showing folders, but you would just click on the Modern Warfare 2 folder and then click Select Folder. You'll be able to see the file path right here. For me, it's the D Drive, then Steam, then Steam Apps, Common, and then Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But yeah, once you've found your Modern Warfare 2 folder and you've selected where the install is going to go, click back to IW4X and then click on the Multiplayer tab and launch IW4X. It's probably going to look a little bit different if you're launching the game for the first time because it might have to get some updates. It's probably installing the client itself in your folder. But once you've done that, you should have IW4X successfully installed on your PC. Now that's just how you get IW4X, but for the rest of the video, I want to give you guys all of the amazing helpful tips that you'll need to get this game running as smoothly as possible. How to unlock everything in the game, useful console commands, how to use the server browser, and what some of the best servers are on here. If you only wanted to know how to get the IW4X client and the launcher, then you don't really need to watch the rest of the video, but I promise you. I've been playing this client for a very long time, and there's a lot of really helpful stuff that I can share with you guys. So let's get into it. The first two things you'll probably want to do once you get IW4X is change your name and also unlock everything in the game because who wants to have to grind through everything again? Sometimes you have to go to your settings, like you have to go to options and then click game and then click enable console, but I think it's just enabled by default on here. In order to pull up the console, you just have to click the tilde key and this is how you're going to be able to access a lot of really helpful commands for the game. From here, you can type slash and then name and then you can make your name whatever you want to. It's currently showing my default name on Steam, which is Merc Music, but currently it's phase tutorial because I'm showing you guys how to do this. But yeah, this is one way to change your name. I don't know exactly when they did this update, but if you also go to barracks, you can just type in your name right here. Let's just change it to Phase Cornbread. Why not? I personally think that this is the easier way to change your name, which is actually really nice. As you can see, I also changed my title to Sub to Merc Music. You can also make it custom if you want to. If you try to click on your title, it will bring you to all of the other titles. But if you want to change the text, you just go over here to Custom Title and then type in whatever you want to. But yeah, as I'm sure you guys can see on IW4X, I'm currently level 70, 10th prestige. I'm all maxed out. Totally grinded and completed all of the challenges for the game. I'm just that dedicated to Modern Warfare 2. Totally kidding. That's complete bullshit. I did what most sane people do on 
W4X and I just unlocked all of the stats so that way you can get all of your classes, full access to customization, and more importantly, your classes and all of the different guns in the game. So yeah, if you want to unlock everything, just go back to the console by clicking the tilde key, type in slash, and then unlock stats. And yeah, once you click enter, you'll unlock everything in the game. I believe you can also now go to barracks and just click unlock stats. Now let's say you don't want to be 10th prestige level 70 and you want to actually do the progression like you did originally on Modern Warfare 2. Well, you don't have to worry about that. If you want to go back to level one and actually do regular progression and start from scratch, all you have to do is click reset stats right here. You can also do the more traditional method and open up the console and type in slash reset stats. Now I haven't tested this personally, so I don't know exactly how this would work. But as a hypothetical scenario, let's say you clicked unlock stats and then you later realized that you wanted to actually start from scratch without completely wiping your progress. Well, there's actually a way to do that. If you go back to your Modern Warfare 2 folder and you click on players, you'll see this file called IW4X stats. This file right here has your IW4X stats. If you really wanted to, you could copy and paste this file and put it into a different folder, relaunch the game, and then create a separate profile with new stats. That way you could essentially have two different profiles, one for just having everything unlocked, and then a separate one where you can get progression. But yeah, once you progress on IW4X, or if you just did unlock stats, you'll be able to unlock everything in the game. When you click create a class, you'll have 15 custom classes, and you'll notice in IW4X that there are actually exclusive weapons that were not in the base Modern Warfare 2. For the assault rifles, this includes the AK-47 Classic, which is the AK from Call of Duty 4. For the SMGs, you have the AK-74U from COD 4 and the Peacekeeper from Black Ops 2. There's no custom light machine guns, but for the sniper rifles, you have the M40A3 from Call of Duty 4 and the Dragunov from COD 4. Still have the riot shield, and when it comes to the secondaries, nothing extra for the machine pistols, nothing extra for the shotguns, but you do have the Gold Desert Eagle from Call of Duty 4. And same thing with the launchers, everything is just from the base Modern Warfare 2 game. All of the equipment is the same, the special grenades are the same, and same thing with the perks. The only other change to create a class in IW4X is that there's no painkiller death streak. You just have copycat, juiced, martyrdom, and final stand. Pretty sure it was taken out because painkiller is annoying as f. But yeah, just like Modern Warfare 2, you can go to your call sign and kill streaks and you can change all of this. There's no custom emblems, but you have all of the base emblems from Modern Warfare 2 as well. All of the kill streaks in IW4X are the same. However, you'll notice when playing IW4X that there might be servers that have kill streaks completely disabled or they'll be restricted. Like you can't go for nukes. They might just run a simple 357. But yeah, let's dive into the settings for the game. If you click options and you look at video, I mean, this is what I'm currently running it at. I'm playing at 4K 144 Hertz, which means I want to hit at least 144 FPS. Make sure to turn off Direct 3D 9EX. This can mess up things for a lot of servers. Field of view is currently at 90. You can change this to whatever you want to. 65 is the default. You can click 80, 90, or 120, but you can also use console commands to change this as well. You'll probably want to keep your field of view scale at one. Otherwise, things will get really crazy. There we go. Now, this is how I remember playing Modern Warfare 2. Maximum FPS. I guess I didn't have this set to anything, but it's at 85 by default. I would recommend putting this to unlimited so that way you get the highest amount of frames and the lowest amount of input delay. On advanced video, this is what I've currently got everything to. I should actually have VSync off. I'm pretty sure I have this on for the sake of recording, but you don't really need this on if you want to be able to max your frames. All these other settings should be fine though, unless you have a personal preference or if you're trying to get performance increases, then maybe click some of these to know. My textures are also on extra. I mean, Modern Warfare 2 is not a very graphic intensive game, so you should be able to have your settings pretty high without seeing any serious performance drops. But next up, let's dive into some very helpful console commands. Now, this is for Call of Duty 4, but obviously most of these console commands also work on Modern Warfare 2. I'm going to briefly go over this, but I'll also have the link in the description so you guys can easily access this. For general console commands, this is how you disconnect and reconnect to the servers. I mean, you don't really need to do this for Modern Warfare 2, but this was a useful way to connect to custom servers on Call of Duty 4 where you couldn't easily access it in the server browser. But yeah, this first command, this allows you to see your FPS. This one shows the lagometer or legometer. This is how you change your max FPS, how you change your field of view. Some of these other ones are more of like increasing the performance for the game. And you would put these commands here in the console if you're doing a private server and you want to just kind of like fly around, give yourself God mode. But what's really nice about the updates that have come to IW4X is that they've streamlined a lot of these really useful and helpful console commands. Your max FPS in your field of view can just be changed right here in the settings. So you don't necessarily have to go to the console and then type in CG underscore field of view to change your field of view. But yeah, let's say you're playing IW4X and you're playing with keyboard and mouse and you realize, eh, I don't really like how this feels or I'm not that good at keyboard and mouse. Does IW4X have controller support? The answer is yes. And IW4X actually recently got native controller support. All you have to do is go to options and then go down to gamepad. Make sure that gamepad is enabled and then you can change all of your settings like you typically would on console. I'm playing on tactical. You can change the button style to represent either Xbox or PlayStation, but do be aware that controller support only means support for Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers. If you want to use a PlayStation controller, you have to get something called DS for Windows. This is their website right here. Now, I mean, it's, it's not working. And I haven't personally tried this, so I don't know if I can recommend it yet. Maybe I can revisit that in the future because I actually do want to get my PlayStation controller to work for IW4X. But yeah, as you can see, we also have enable slowdown aim assist and enable lock on aim assist. Not only does IW4X have native controller support, but they also have native aim assist now. But I'm going to put a tiny little asterisk next to that because, well, I'll explain later. As you can see here, we also have sense 
sensitivity and you can just click on preset to change between like one through ten i'm basically playing at something between two and three and i'll explain why it's so low in a sec but yeah we've got everything unlocked we've got our settings let's go actually find a game i think it's self-explanatory enough all you have to do is click join game at the top and you'll be greeted with the server browser you'll want to make sure that your source is checked to internet and you'll click refresh list to refresh everything now i know that most of us are used to a superior quick match feature that has skill-based matchmaking which is awesome that's not what we have here on iw4x we have an actual server browser which lets you pick exactly what you want to play if you want to play team deathmatch on nuketown you can do that if you want to do some snipers only team deathmatch on a black ops 2 map you can do that as well the possibilities are basically endless on here but let me show you guys exactly how to navigate the server browser once you've refreshed the list you can actually sort everything based off of the server name you can sort by the map that you actually want to play the number of players in the server you can sort by the game modes as well so that way if you want to play something very specific like global thermonuclear war or gun game you can actually sort by that you can actually sort by mods as well which we'll get into later and you can also sort by ping so that way you ensure that you have the worst connection possible just kidding but yeah if it's a really high ping number or if it's in the red you don't want to try to play on that server you'll have terrible connection and an overall terrible experience if you want to have good connection look for numbers like this me personally i like to sort by the amount of players in the server at any given time so i can get into a basically a full lobby if there's a server you like all you have to do is click on it and click add to favorites and if you want to find the servers that you favorited just go back up here to the source and switch it to favorites and when it comes to favorite servers that brings us to an interesting question what are the best servers to play on iw4x as you can see here i've got a lot of different servers favorited i mean the arz sniper servers are very cool it's basically snipers only but they're snipers from all kinds of different call of duty games and custom maps it's super fun if you like doing snipers only stuff the nbs servers aren't too bad either i think this is the one that i did hip fire only gun game on nameless noobs is also super fun as well they've got a lot of different fun tdm servers reaction gaming tdm has some really interesting maps as well like we got tropical crash here and i've also got some bot warfare and some casual stuff so that way i can warm up and kind of get ready to play but by and large when you're on iw4x make sure to go to internet refresh the list and check out whatever you want to i really do think the best part about this modded client is that there is so much to check out and i don't necessarily think you're going to get the full experience if you limit yourself to like one type of server or one thing but just be aware that when you're going onto servers like this where it has the map name in red that means that you're going to have to download the map which brings us back to the main menu and the mod section when you're playing iw4x you'll notice that when you're connecting to these servers that you might have to download mods this is not a big deal you can see all the mods that you have downloaded right here and sometimes before you load into a server it actually has to load the mod for example if i click on the arz mod and i click launch it's actually just gonna have to relaunch the game and you might notice that your classes and your kill streaks and other things might actually be changed just be aware that once you have a mod loaded if you change a class here but then you go back to the base version of iw4x that class might not be there and that's because when you load a mod you're actually kind of loading almost like a different part of the game we'll use my kill streaks as an example on here i've got harrier chopper gunner and nuke but if i go back to mods and i click launch without mods you'll see my kill streaks will actually change we're back on the base iw4x right now and when i go to kill streaks you can see that i actually have harrier ac130 and nuke so yeah just try to be aware of when you have a mod loaded and when you don't now as you can see at the top we have a message of the day that says please update to iw4x 0.7.2 this will give you the native controller support with aim assist at the bottom you can see your change log and it says the version that you're running and mine is currently fully up to date if you click the change log you can see all the different changes that they've made and if you're wondering how do i update iw4x all you have to do is go back to the launcher and launch multiplayer and it will actually auto update your game for you very easy and very straightforward but yeah guys just before recording this video i actually finally got my iw4x fully updated i hadn't done that before so right now i want to test out the native controller support and the aim assist we're gonna go into nameless noobs dlc and do rust long and i'm gonna try to play with controller let's see if it feels any different now for me modern warfare 2 is one of those games where i played it on xbox growing up and it just feels weird to play with keyboard and mouse i do my best but there's just something that doesn't feel right about it completely and if you're ever playing iw4x and you're playing with a controller and you're wondering why doesn't it feel like i have aim assist it's because you might actually not have aim assist i don't know exactly how you can check for this but there will be some servers on here that actually don't support controller aim assist it's completely up to the servers to make that decision i mean maybe some of them don't want the controllers to have aim assist maybe they just haven't gotten around to updating it yet but i'm gonna be honest even though this game has controller support i don't really feel like it's all that good oh we got harriers my first xbox controller nuke i have no clue so we can just hide here and get it come on don't blow me up wait no not the face cornbread uh, they already took out my Harrier anyway. You know, part of the controller support not feeling right could also be the field of view. Whoop. Okay, that is... Yeah, that's definitely aim assist. It's got some. I don't know if it auto-balanced teams there, but it, like, put me right next to an enemy. But yeah, that's... Yeah, you can feel it. It's just... Maybe not as strong? I don't know. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my little IW4X tutorial. If you guys have any more questions or concerns about the game, make sure to leave a comment letting me know. And with that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and found this video helpful. If you guys did and you want to see some more videos like this one, make sure to drop a like. I'll see you guys later. Now come,